interesting. Oh, hey, I'm Julie. Hey, I'm Carolyn, and we're here to talk to you about the importance of the Arctic and how it's in danger. It's in danger? Yes, it is. So many inhabitants of the Arctic are suffering from our pollution. So what can we do to help? Well, if you really want to make a change, you can contribute to many causes. Every action makes a chain reaction. The first group is doing a project on protecting the Arctic. Do you want to go check it out? All right, let's go. Pennies for the Planet is a non-profit nationwide campaign created by the Audubon Society in alliance with Toyota to help critical conservation projects. It's powered by children such as the first graders by collecting pennies and other coins. The Arctic is located in the northernmost part of the world. The North Pole is the northernmost point and Greenland is the northernmost country. The polar bear, also known as King of the North, is one of the most popular Arctic mammals. Polar bears are the largest non-aquatic predators in the world. The harp seal, also known as the saddleback, spends most of its time in the ocean. The mother harp seal can find her baby by its scent alone. The walrus, infamous for its long tusks, is currently endangered. It uses its tusks for reasons such as a tool to pick up their prey and poke breathing holes in the ice. The beluga whale, also known as the sea canary, is one of the smallest species of whale. Beluga whale families live in a group known as pods. The arctic fox, also called the polar fox, uses its fur to keep warm in its frigid habitat and also to hide from its prey. The Atlantic Puffin, also called the Sea Parrot, is famous for its multicolored beak. Its beak turns gray in the winter and buds with color in the spring. The Arctic faces many dangers. One of the reasons for the hazards of this environment is the invasiveness of humans. Industrial and military waste is constantly polluting the Arctic's otherwise clean, frigid waters. Another reason is the oil spills, which frequently contaminate not only the water, but the plants. When the filthy water evaporates into the air, it poisons the plants, a main source of food for many Arctic animals. These Arctic animals, which are suffering from our environmental mistakes, may soon go extinct if we do not help. Earlier this year, the kindergarten, first, and second grade classes visited the Philadelphia Zoo. They first visited the Reptile House and the Big Cat Falls, where they saw lions, tigers, and other big felines. We also attended a great presentation on habitats, where the children reenacted how certain plants and animals survive in their homes. Lastly, we visited the polar bears. Unfortunately, they did not go swimming, but that did not nearly ruin our fun day at the Philadelphia Zoo. The first graders drew pictures to put on their penny jars to show their support for Pennies for Planet. They use their jars to collect pennies and other coins. During lunch, the 8th grade teamed up with the 1st and 2nd grade to raise money for pennies for the planet. At the bake sale, kids seemed happy to help the organization even by donating money for a helpful cause. The first graders had fun learning about the polar bears. They did art projects and took home a stuffed polar bear made of recycled materials named Fuzzy. While they had Fuzzy, they kept a journal and drew pictures on how they recycle at home. Mrs. Cochran presented a video about polar bears to first graders. She also read books such as Polar Bears Canoe and Once I Was a Cardboard Box and Now I'm a Book About Polar Bears. The children love learning about the King of the North. first grade teacher at St. Bede's School. I'm here to ask her some questions. Why did you select this project? I chose Pennies for the Planet because it's a wonderful environmental project 
uh, dedicated to protecting wildlife and the habitats that the animals live in. I also think that it's important to keep children informed about animals that might become extinct. And I thought that this project would give my first graders an opportunity to learn that they can make a difference in protecting the environment, especially for animals. How do you think the first graders are responding to this environmental project, and how are you incorporating this in your daily activities? They have been wonderful. They've had a really good time. They've learned an awful lot. Uh, some of the different activities that we've done, well, first of all, we've centered all around polar bears. And uh, one of the first things that we did was we talked about what a polar bear looked like. We saw pictures on the internet. We've read many stories about polar bears, um, how they look, what they eat, what their environment is like. Well, Mrs. Cochran, what's this all about? This is a project, this was a little experiment to show the children how actually a polar bear is able to uh, keep warm in the freezing Arctic water. And what it is, first we have a plastic, two plastic bags that have nothing inside of it, just to act as like your skin would be touching the cold water. The other plastic bag actually has shortening in it, which is almost, which is like oil, the blubber of the polar bear. And the children put their hands in that, and then they put both hands into the water. Put your hand flat in there in the water. And which one feels warmer? This definitely does. <laughs> definitely does, right? That one got cold right away. Yeah. So the children had fun with that. Thank you so much, Mrs. Cochran. The first graders seem like they're having a lot of fun with this. You're welcome. Wow, the first graders really love learning about the Arctic. Yes, they do. Now that we know more about the dangers they face, we can contribute to the protection of the Arctic. That sounds like a great idea. I know. We can donate to pennies for the planet. Okay, let's tell Nick how we're going to make a change in the environment. All right, let's go.